welcome we're going to look at linear programming in this uh, video now let us look at an example of a linear programming let's assume a lecturer has five schools to visit or to supervise students on teaching practice the lecturer is to go for supervision in uh, is the lecturer is to go for supervision from the office Point A is the office. The schools are LMNOP. The lecturer is going to drive there with personal car. The number of lines indicates the distance between the cities. To save fuel and time, the lecturer wants to take the shortest distance. So the lecturer will calculate the distance and take the shortest route. So this can be represented graphically. To represent this, you have the point that the lecturer is starting from, which is point A. And these are all the places that the lecturer is going to visit. You have L, M, N, M, N, P, O, N. These are the points the lecturer wants to visit. And these are the distance, 15, 9, 6, 12, 8, 20, 6, 7. These are the distance. But it wants to go through the shortest route. So to do this, you think, what can we do to achieve this? The technique of choosing the shortest route is called linear programming. And the objective of the lecturer is to supervise the students within the given time. The process of choosing the best route is operation research. Now, operation research is an approach to decision making which involve a set of methods to operate a system in the example in the example by my system was the supervisor uh, supervision model so look at it this is the supervision remember let as a lecturer has five squad he wants to supervise this is so we can look at the model as the supervision model again let us look at some common techniques in linear programming. One, we have what we call decision variable. These are the variables that decide the output. They represent the ultimate solution. To solve any problem, we must first identify decision variables. In the above examples, the decision variables were the number of units of vocational and secondary schools, which was denoted by x and y that was what we have in the other school whereby the linear uh, example we just gave is supervisor who wants to go and supervise you have the schools we are donated s y and the rest of them now let us look at the next terminology we might come across which is objective function objective function is defined as the objective of making decision in the above example the proprietor wishes to increase the total profit represented by Z. So profit is the objective function. If, for example, in a particular school, like I mentioned in the decision making, you discover that the school, uh, the proprietor wishes to have a vocational and secondary school. And in this case, the S and Y represent the school and the, the secondary school and the vocational school. So when you come down to the objective function you see that what the proprietor wants is to be able to ma maximize the profit that is required then the next thing that for the for the proprietor to maximize the profit there could be a constraint and what could be these constraints these constraints are the restriction or limitation of the decision variable they usually limit the value of the decision variable in the above example the limit of the availability of staff and facilities are the constraints you have had the uh, decision you have the objective but now you could have constraints that may not make you to achieve the objective you have set again we have what we call non-negativity restriction non-negativity restriction is uh, this about decision variable in all linear program should always take non-negative non-negative value this means the value for decision variable should be greater than or equal to zero. It must be greater than zero or equal to zero. It should not be less than zero. With that, it means there is no negativity. 
Now, let us look at the method of forecasting. There are different forecasting techniques. One of such methods is what we refer to as the DEFI techniques. A group of field experts respond to a series of questions. The experts are kept apart and unaware of each other. The results of the first questionnaire are compiled and a second questionnaire based on the result of the first is presented to the experts who are then asked to re-evaluate their responses to the first questionnaire. This question, questioning compilation and re-questioning uh, continues until the researchers have a narrow range of opinions. This is what we refer to as DEFI technique. Now we have another technique referred to as the scenario writing. The forecast the uh, forecaster generates different outcomes based on different starting criteria. The decision maker then decide on the most likely outcome from the numerous scenarios. Now the next word is subjective approach. In subjective approach, it, the subjective approach allows forecasters to predict outcome based on their subject, subjective thoughts and feelings. This method uses brainstorming uh, sections to generate ideas and to solve problems. You know, casually free from criticism and peer pressure. Peer pressure. These often use the time constraints. It uses time constraints. Then again, it prioritizes objective focus. Now, let us look at the last one in this series, time series forecasting. This is a quantitative forecasting technique. It measures data gathered over time to identify a trend. Now, having said that, let us look at the method that we can use to represent what we are doing in a linear program. There are different methods that could be used. We're going to look at the graphic method of programming. There is a graphical method, you have the simplest method. But here we want to look at the graphical method of programming. Now, when you're talking about graphical method of programming, what do we mean? Graphical method of linear programming problem by finding the highest or the lower point of intersection between the objective function lines and the feasible region on a graph. Now, there are steps that could be taken to achieve this. The first step is to define constraints. State all constraints relevant to the linear program. These are the steps we're going to look at. First, you define the constraints. And in defining the constraints, you must be able to state all constraints relevant to a linear program. Problems, linear programming problems. Then in this case, it should be defined in an inequality form. How do we mean by inequality form? First, it could be greater than, greater than, or greater than, or equal to. Again, it could equally be less than, less than, or equal to. So these are the inequality. Greater than, less than, is not equal to. So imagine it. So state what is less than and what is greater than. That must be stated. Step two, define the objective function. Define the objective functions. Now, express the objective of solving problem in mathematical equation. For example, if the objective is to maximize the contribution of student enrollment of course A and B having contribution per unit of 10 Naira and 5 Naira respectively. The objective function shall be, this will be the objective function. You have 10A plus 5B, that will be the maximum contribution from each of the courses. Now, again, if we look through, this means that the objective of solving the problem is to maximize the total contribution of the school system by admitting the optimal mix of product A and B, 
Remember, we are looking at this product A and B. Now, the problem with this is that it cannot be plotted on a graph. To solve this problem, define the random number in a place of maximum contribution. Now, we have to fix the number. In place of maximum contribution, we have to put a number. If you leave it this way, we can plot it on a graph. So, to be able to plot it on a graph, we need to bring in a random number to replace this maximum number. And in this case, what does it imply? It, me it means that since we, are, uh, we only require the slope, you know, you need to have a slope and the gradient. Therefore, we must do it in such a way that you will be able to plot it on the graph. So, in this order, we can plot the objective function on a graph using random value. And in using random value in place of maximum contribution. Now, let's uh, look at this example that is here. Now, we have tried to put it into this 100 is a random number. It could be any other number. It's just a value that you pick. 100 is just a random number. Any other value, any other value could also be used instead of 100. So, with this, it means 5a plus 5b, that means this cos a, 10 cos a, 5 this is a monetary value. We can, if, when you put them together, you are going to have a maximum of 100. So, which means it will either be less than or equal to 100. That is the maximum. It cannot be greater than. Now, let's look at the next thing, the step three. Step three is say, plot the constraints on a paper or graph, graph paper now. Plot the constraint on a graph paper. What are these constraints? Now, remember, we have set out the constraint. You saw what I said? It's less than or equals to 100. We have 2a plus 4b is less than or equals to 100. It cannot be more. It will be less. This is an example. Now, let's look at what it could be. To plot the graph, convert the inequality to an equal equation. So, if for us to be able to convert, we cannot use this, we have to convert it to an equation. So, we now arrive at this, we now be 2a plus 4b equals 100 because we want to plot a graph. And because we are plotting a graph, we need to set it out. Then, continue now, we have to get the coordinate of any two points from the equation. Then, to get the coordinate, insert a random number again. We start a random value for either A or B. DG, we can find the value of B when A is equals zero. Now, what do we do if A is equals zero? We're going to put it, remember, you have 2A plus 4B. So this one will be 2 into zero plus 4B equals 100. And what would that give us? This will be 2 times zero is zero. 4b over 100, and that will give us 4b equals 100. Now, if 4b is to get b, b will be 100 over 4, and that will give us 25. So it means b is equals to 25. Now, let us work out the second one. Here, it therefore means a equals 0, and b equals 25. Now, let's see the second part. If 2a plus 4 into zero because we are substituting it again also for the second part so that we can get what the other one says now in the same way this will now be 2a plus zero equals to 100 then that will give us 2a equals to 100 and that will give a equals 100 over 2 and that will give a 50 therefore it means a equals 50 and b uh, equals uh, a equals 50 and b equals uh, 0 or 50 comma 0. So once this is achieved, the next thing that we now need to do is to get the graph plotted. We now have to plot it against the graph that we can now use. So this is how it's going to appear. Let's take this as a graph and we have enter. This is cos A, this is cos B. And what do we need to do? We now have to look for the lines. Remember, we have 50 and we have 25. 
what was the 25 under the a where the b when you have 0 and 25 and this is cos b another cos a we have 0 and 50 so that is why you have this red line so you have to join the points together giving you this red line now having done that we have to go to step um, four step four says highlight the feasible region on the graph after plotting the graph in the, the the constraint inequalities on the graph share the area of the graph which is also the area of the graph that is the region that is required so if you look at this remember we have something that we have had this this slope and in this slope if you this is 50 this is 25 so this place that is shaded highlight yellow that is our visible region so this is the visible region that we're going to work with for example the construct of a in this area now we still go further and what we need to do now the graph which is uh at the outside now this is the one outside this is the one within the region so in this case we now go further still look at B, uh, step five to plot the objective function in the graph because remember there is an objective function so to get the objective is the objective function if we go back we have our 10a plus 5b equals to 100 so we have to solve for cos a and cos b so when you solve it you are uh, now have 10a plus 0 because we are putting the 0 equals to 100 then a equals to 100 divided by 10 and that will give us 10 so here we have 0 plus 5b equals 100 100 divided by 5 will give you 20 so for plot 1 we have 0 20 plot 2 we have 10 0 so let's see that and see how it goes now this is it this is the objective function so you discover that for this 10 we have 0 10 that is what we have against a for b we have 0 20 having done this let's get to the next part which is the optimal to find the optimal level of the region that we need to look at now to look for the optimal what do we now need to do in looking for the optimal level you can get the optimal point by sliding a, a ruler if you have a ruler you can come here because this is your you can slide it and that one is really most important whereby you are dealing with um uh the, more than a slope where you are having more than one equation that is where you really need to uh, do that if you have more than one equation in this case maybe you have something like this and you have another one coming there you have maybe probably sorry that is a bad one let me quickly take it off maybe you have one of this nature let's take it maybe you have something like this you have one coming no this is not good enough you have one coming like this and you probably you have another coming so this point you see at this point you are having something that is transcending that is where you will now have to pick a ruler pick the point that is in here and measure but again you can use your uh you, you you secondly you can just measure directly from the graph using your physical eye to gauge because in this area uh what we have here actually now is just um just two points that is what we have here we have just two points in this area here we have 50 and so we don't have any other thing cross just like here if we don't have any other thing crossing so it, we have our points here it's already fixed and this one is for the uh equation that we have the objective function. now what do we do the step seven is find the coordinates of the optimum to get the coordinates now of the optimum what do we do what is the coordinates of the optimum in this area the coordinates of the optimal point can lie on the x or y axis it can be on this axis it can be on this axis now where that happen it means you pick it wherever it is then again in this above example we have been doing we could say that the coordinate of the optimal 
of the point lies on the y axis because this 50 is higher than the 25 so this is the optimum and the optimal point is 50 and that is why we have it that the optimal point is 50 because it lies on the y axis again where the optimal point where the optimal point of a linear programming problem does not lie on the on either s or y axis phi is coordinate by drawing vertical and horizontal line now i can quickly show you this what do you need to do let's assume you have this and we have something like this and you have another one like this now in this case you discover that you are having two uh, lines and if you now want to get the maximum point it's at the point where they meet that is where you now trace down and bring it down you trace it, get to this point, and you pull it down. So in this area, when you do that, you will be able to get what is required. What I mean, you get to this point here, you take it down. But in here, you don't need to do that. Those are the horizontal and vertical line that you need to draw. So this is what you need to do when you are working with the graphical methods. So in this case, it means going for cos A, we be more famous because it has 50 there and the other one is 25. In monetary value, this will be more useful. Now, let us look at another method that is used, the equation method of linear programming. Apart from the graphical method, we equally have the equation method of linear programming. One of such methods, the method is the same with from step one to six you could see here i'm starting with step seven because step one to six is the same with the graphical method there is no difference the difference occurs when you now get to step seven so what is it that we need to look out for now but there are things we equally need to know note where we are using the graphic the equation method you know here in the equation method is more accurate it gives you more accurate uh, figures where you use the equation method. Also, unlike the graphical method in which the coordinates of the optimal point are found by measuring directly on the graph, you don't do that here. You solve it out, and that is why we give you more accurate answer. Now, let us see what happens when you now get to step seven. Here we say identify the equation. That is the first thing you need to do because when you have worked to step six, the next thing for you is to identify the equation. Have you identified the equation? Rearrange the equation. Rewrite the equation the way that you will be able to solve it simultaneously in a mathematical solve it in a mathematical way. Now, finally, you have to find the first coordinate of the process of eliminating because in that process you have to use the process of elimination to be able to work it through now you can watch out that in other videos